We're on problem 20. Problem 20. Of the five coordinates associated with points A, B, C, and D, E on A, B, C, D, and E on the number line above, which has the greatest absolute value? Okay, so they just let me just draw the number line that they drew. So and then they say from 0 to 1. So 0 1 2 and they say minus 1, minus 2. And then they say these are choices A, B, C, D, and E. Which of the five coordinates associated with the points A, B, C, D, and E on the number line above, which has the greatest absolute value? So you can view absolute value as the distance from 0. So the greatest distance from 0 is going to happen in two places. It's going to happen here at A. It's also going to happen here at E. Now, can you have more than one right answer? Because both of those are choices. Let's see. All of the figures are except when it's stated in a specific problem. All figures so in the, indicate the best of the answer choices given. Let me see. Can you have, I'm looking up the uh, thing. Is it possible to have more than one right answer? Because it doesn't seem, this doesn't seem quite right that I can have two possible answers for this one. The answer is A. The coordinate A is the farthest from 0. This has the greatest absolute value. I disagree with that. It could be choice E as well. The coordinate, the absolute value of the number x is the distance between x and 0 on the number line. The coordinate of point A is the farthest from 0, and this has the greatest absolute value. That's false. I, well, I mean, that's true, but E is just as far. I don't know. I think they made a mistake. I think this could be choices A or E, because the absolute value of either of those is 2. I think they made a mistake. I and mean, they say the choice is A, which I agree with, but it could just as easily be choice E. So I don't know. Write a letter to GMAC. I'm, I mean, th this seems pretty straightforward. Of the five coordinates associated with choices A, B, C, D, and E on the number line, which has the greatest absolute value? Absolute value of this point is 2. The absolute value of this point is 2. They're equal. Anyway, next problem. So I think it should be A or E. It's surprising that they would let a question like that get through their screen, or at least they should get rid of choice E. If x and y are prime numbers, so x and y are prime, which of the following cannot be the sum of x and y? x plus y cannot equal, not equal what? So statement 1, 5. Well, I can immediately say 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, so that doesn't work. Cannot equal. So B. B. 9. I could do 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. So it's not, this was A, this is B. Let's see what C is. So it's not B. C is 13. So let me think. What could be 11 plus 2 is equal to 13? So it's not choice C. D. 16. 16. The sum. So let me see. 16. 9 and 7, no. 11 and 5. 11 plus 5 is equal to 16, so it's not. So without even looking at E, it's probably going to be E. E, 23. Let me see if I can come up with two prime numbers that add up to 23. 19 and 4, no. Let's see, 2 and 21, no. I mean, first of all, we found examples for all of these, so you should, if you, you don't want to waste time on the GMAT, you should already have chosen E and moved on by this point. But we could just look through a bunch of a bunch of prime numbers and think of if we can if they can add up to 23 but I can't think of any right at the moment and I feel pretty good that E is the answer because I was able to find prime numbers that added up to all of the other four choices next question 22 I'm going to switch colors just to ease the monotony if each of the following fractions were written as a repeating decimal which ha which would have the longest sequence of different digits the longest sequence of different digits. Are they going to sit here and make us? So let me write all the choices down. Maybe we can do some cancellation from the get-go. 2 over 11. B is 1 third. And we already know that that's going to be 1. That's just going to be 0.33 repeating. Longest sequence of different digits. So it's not going to be choice B. Because choice B, it, it doesn't have different digits. It just keeps being a 3. So it's not going to be choice B. So we don't have to worry about that. Choice C. 41 over 99. Choice D 
is 2 over 3. We know that that's 0. 0.666, just keeps going, so it's not going to be that. It's the same digit that just keeps repeating. And choice E is 23 divided by 37. So I think 11 divided, uh, two, uh, 2 divided by 11 repeats. Let's just try it, though. 11 goes into 2.000. One time, 1 times 11 is 11. You get a 90. 11 goes into 90, goes into 8 times 88. You get 20. I already see the pattern. 11 goes into 20 2 times. 2 times, oh, sorry, it goes into 20 1 time. 1 times 11 is 11. Then you get a 90, goes into 8 times. So it's just 0.181818. It's just going to keep repeating 0.18. So that's 2 over 11. 41 over 99. Let me do it in a different color just so I don't get too messy. 99 goes into 41.0000. So 99 goes into 410 four times. 4 times 99 is what, 396? 4 times 9 is 6. 3, 4 times 9 is 36. Yeah, 396. This is equal to 140. 99 goes into 140 one time. 1 times 99 is 99. This becomes 41. I already start repeating. Right, 99 goes into 410. That's just like that. So it's going to be 0.41 repeating over and over again because we we got the same number again. We're going 99 into 41 four times. We're going to get 396. And it's just going to keep happening, and then we're going to get uh, what are we going to get? 396, and then we're going to get 140 again. And it's 4141. So it's 41 repeating. So if I had to guess, it's already going to be choice E without having to do any work because these just have the same numbers repeating from the get-go. Choices A and C have the same two numbers repeating from the get-go. So they're equivalent. I'm guessing that this one has a lot more. So you could, if you just wanted to worry about time, you could just pick E and move on. But let's do it, just, just to prove to ourselves. So 37 goes into 23. I don't remember when I took the GMAT having to do this much decimal division So or decimal multiplication. So 37 goes into. 230, I don't know, does it go into 6 times? No, probably 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 3 is 15. So it's 18 plus 3. OK, 30, 85. Actually, this would have gone 6 times. Let me change that to 6. So let me change it. 6, let me do it in a different color. I don't want to make it too messy. 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times 3 is 18 plus 4 is 1 is 6 times 3 is 18 plus 22 so it goes 80 37 goes into 82 times 2 times 37 is what 74 2 times 37 right 60 plus 14 74 you get a 60 30 going to go 60 so already we've started repeating we haven't even started repeating we're already three digits into it so this one's going to have the most this is going to have the longest sequence of different digits. So we don't have to keep going. We've answered our question. The choice is definitely E. And next question. They've drawn something there. In the figure above, the coordinates of point V are. Well, this is just kind of a reading the graph type of problem. I'm just going to draw this fourth quadrant. OK, just so that we can show you, so I can show you how I think about it. Okay, so let me just count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So just to, you know, they tell us that each of those slashes are one because they go back, you know, they do it a couple of places. They go one, two, three, four, five, and then they say this is negative five. So that's information that you actually need. You have to know what that each of those slashes are definitely one. But then on this, they go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is point 0.7. And you have to just count it on your paper. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is point 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is minus 5. And this is where V is. So they're just t testing to see whether you can, if you know how to you know, graph a point. So this is x is 7, and y is minus 5. So it's 7 minus 5. And actually, and actually, that's interesting. You didn't even, you know, you don't even have to count the points because you say, you know what, this is in the fourth quadrant. X is positive, Y is negative. And if you look at all the choices, 
There's only one choice where x is positive and y is negative, and that's choice E. So you really didn't even have to count it, although I think this wouldn't have taken much time to count it, so that's not like a huge shortcut. Anyway, see you in the next.